Welcome back to Beyond the Headline, everyone. It's a very exciting day to be on the show because I'm here with the CEO of Tula, Julia Strauss. Julia, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Glad to be here. Thanks for including me. I'd love to start out with an introduction to Tula and how you're empowering individuals to really take care of their skin in a unique way. Yeah, absolutely. So Tula is about a year and a half old. We're a a wellness company that started with skincare as our first line. Um, And really what sets Tula apart is we use probiotics, uh, which are those good for you bacteria that you often hear about in gut health um, as sort of the core of our ingredient story. So our founder is actually not a dermatologist. She's a gastroenterologist. Uh, Her name is Dr. Roshini Raj. And she spent her career looking at your stomach and gut health and really studying everything that goes into um, wellness from the inside out. And she's taken a lot of those principles and the research she's done there and applied that to what we're doing on the skincare side. So it's a very different approach in that sense. And from an ingredient standpoint, we're really excited because a lot of research came out recently. Um, There was a big study from the American Academy of Dermatology um, around the use of probiotics topically. Um, And we really were the first brand to use them across our core line as sort of driving um, the health benefits. And the benefits are widespread and they're they're really a range that applies to really all skin types. Um, So there's everything from anti-aging, which of course is, you know, for a certain demographic, a a terrific uh, benefit to focus on, um, to just core skin health, you know, hydration, um, strengthening the barrier of your, the natural barrier of your skin um, that helps defend yourself against everything from pollution to UV rays. Um, to just the uh, ox- you know, radical free radicals that can damage your skin long term. Um, so it's a different approach. It's a little bit tricky because bacteria doesn't always sound like a good thing, but good bacteria can actually be very good for you. I really think it's the perfect time for a brand like Tula because we're seeing a new wave of beauty, of skincare, and really all products that are made with meaningful ingredients, safe ingredients, and yep. very honest brands like this is what's in it, and that's all. How is that giving your team headwinds to really pave the way here? Headwinds or tailwinds? Tailwinds. Something, <laughs> tailwinds. Okay, I'm like, well, um, yeah, I, you know, I think that the timing is very important because uh, education around products and sort of the consumer's desire to understand exactly what is in a product and what those benefits are and what is not in a product um, is a relatively new phenomenon. If you look at, you know, sort of the past five years, the, the level of um, scrutiny, the level of questions, you know, just the basic understanding of what is a free radical, what is a paraben, what is mineral oil, all these things that I think if you ask most consumers five years ago, you know, they wouldn't, it would have been something that kind of rolled off the tongue. And I think now as consumers get more and more, there's more and more choices, there's more and more information out there on, you know, on the internet. Um, they are eager to understand truly what is the story behind the product and what is going into each product. Um, and we've really tried to take an approach, which is here is, you know, here is what we're doing. Here is the science behind it. And here is what we are making sure that we avoid. Um, and, and frankly, you know, I'm new to beauty. Um, I've only, this is my first time working in the beauty space. Um, and it can be very confusing. I'm still confused. It, there's so much information out there and there's so many different websites and, you know, resources you can use. Um, that I think we are still trying to navigate how do you present that in a way that is digestible, no pun intended, um, and, and how do you make sure that, you know, we're answering the questions that, that come in. And, and a lot of this is going to be learning as we go and we learn from our consumers. Um, but a lot of it is also how do we present this in a way that, um, you know, gives information up front um, and makes it, it very easy to, to understand. What are some of the core things that you've learned so far? Oh, gosh, I learned I've learned more in you know the past whatever it is ten months than um, I, I can imagine you know learn. I mean, we've learned so much about our customers, so much about the product, and sort of what what people are looking for. Um, I think first and foremost, we've learned that uh, you know our customer, whether it is on the younger side or even you know our customers who range all the way up to sixty or seventy years old, are very hungry for information about this the science behind our products. So, you know, it's not enough to just say these are probiotics, they're in our they're in your face cream and they are good. They want to know why, how, is it live bacteria? Is it, you know, how does this all work? Um, and so I think the how behind our products has been very interesting. And it's one of the reasons why, you know, we initially launched with QVC, um, because QVC is such an incredible platform for storytelling and sharing of information. And it gives you the opportunity to say, this isn't just a product on the shelf in Sephora. This is actually a product where our founder, Dr. Raj, who is a doctor, is able to spend eight, 15 minutes, whatever it might be, 
to explain exactly where this all comes from. And drawing that connection, especially from a health perspective, um, is, is really critical. So I think the biggest lesson has been don't speed through this and take the time to explain exactly what is um, going into each product and even why we developed each product. Why do we have a hydrating cream and a cleanser and a mask? How does this all work together? Um, sometimes just keeping things simple and really explaining um, the, the step process is is where you need to start. I'm really glad that you touched on that because you've been at Bobble Bar, now you're at Tula, and it's very complicated to build a relationship with a customer online yeah. for the first time, especially for skincare, because I want to talk to an expert. I want to try it on right. my face and see how it feels. Right. What's that experience right. been like at Tula specifically? Yeah, I mean, it, it couldn't have been more different a purchase consideration, right? I mean, I came from a, a fashion company where in, in some ways it very much was an impulse purchase, right? I mean, fashion jewelry is a very visual, very conspicuous product um, that in most cases, aside from, you know, the weight of the product or how long it's going to, you know, certain sizing issues, you're kind of making a decision on the fly. Um, and that's a great, you know, one of the reasons that I think Bobovar is such an interesting company and in that it's able to take advantage of that kind of impulse behavior. Um, the complete other spectrum is going into something that is health related, that is um, skincare related as opposed to just color. Um, it's a very considered purchase because most women choose certain products for their routine and stick with them for years. So you're asking someone to change a behavior that may have begun back when they were a teenager learning from their, their mother. Right. Um, so I think that that while it is very difficult sometimes to get people to make that first choice, once you get them, the loyalty is is incredible and very powerful because they've already they've, they've sort of built you into their routine. Um, so, th so getting someone into the door was was always sort of the first step. Um, and I think in terms of that relationship, what we've seen hands down um, be the most powerful tool is uh, referral and recommendation. You know, where does someone make a decision like this, which isn't based on visual, isn't just based on price, um, you know, something that is going to be a very considered purchase they want to hear from their friends or trusted influencers. Um, and so that can be everyone from Dr. Raj, who, of course, is an incredibly trusted authority in, in this field, or it can be something as simple as, as a mother, a sister, a friend, um, or even a social, you know, someone on social, blogger or, or YouTuber. Um, and I think what we learned very early when we launched Tula.com was that the minute someone was able to say, I believe in this product, I have touched and felt this, here's what it feels like on my skin, here are the results that I'm seeing, um, that got people over the hurdle. Um, and so you see that on a micro level, which is, where'd you hear of Tula? I heard it from about it from a friend to something more macro, which is, I saw this YouTube video and 100 people decided that this was, you know, a, a great next test. Um so it really, I mean, it, bought, it really blew me away when initially we launched um, because we had a couple, you know, bloggers who we'd reached out to who were really interested in the product. They tried it for a few months. They really, you know, took time to consider it and to, to give it a, a try. And the minute that they posted, it was just instantaneous. People started to say, I will purchase. Um, and I think that still is incredible to me that's, that, that that person is so trusted that they will immediately, ha have, you know, drive a purchase. Without, um, I mean, immediately people just link right through and and, and purchase. So it's, it's such a great point. It lends to it's just having a conversation about this. Actually, the power that bloggers have today. You oh. become this not just this trusted source like Lola, for example, and they just started yeah. the broadcast. But yeah. I heard about Tool immediately. Reached out to the team. What was yep. the importance for you guys? You mentioned when you were sharing it with some of the bloggers or influencers that you gave them a couple of months to try it. Yep. Not like sending it, here it is, and let us know in a week. Yep. Why was that critical? Skin, skincare is different. You know, skincare is not, again, I, I, I always look at cosmetics and you look at the red lip or you look at um, a great shimmery eyeshadow for the summer or, you know, any of those tools. And that's something that you could immediately see a, a, the before and after is immediate, right? You know, within five minutes, if that foundation is going to match your skin tone or if that, um, you know, if that uh, mascara is going to really make a difference in lengthening. Skincare takes time. And, and, you know, the science behind it is it actually takes between four and six weeks for your skin cells completely to turn over um, before you'd start seeing results from something new that you're using, right? So that's why when we often look at before and afters with some of our consumer surveys, the time period is usually between 14 days and call it six weeks. 
Um, so it's a very, again, it's, it's a purchase that it takes time to be able to see if A, your, your skin reacts well to it, and then B, if you're seeing the kind of results that you're looking for. So if you're, you know, you take our um, day night cream, our hydrating day night cream, which is our number one seller. Um, you can't use that in one day and say, gosh, I feel more hydrated. I mean, maybe you will. And there are some people who say instantaneous results, but it's certainly not something I'd ever, you know, say, gosh, you're going to expect a, a difference by tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, right, exactly. God, like this is to change my life. Although we do have some of those responses. And I will say with our mask, um, there are some products that obviously have a, a quicker turnaround, but, um, but no, we wanted to make sure that they had time to really fall in love with it. Um, and one thing we've done, you know, we, we don't, we don't do a lot of paid advertising. We don't, um, pay to play. We we give people products and say if you love them and you really believe in the in the you know benefits, um, we'd love you to share them. If not, we completely understand. Um, and I think that what it comes down to, especially in this marketplace, because it is so crowded um, and there is so much noise of people pushing products and messaging, and and it needs to be authentic. And I I mean that word is like you know organic, authentic. You hear it like seven hundred times in any marketing meeting, but it's. It's so true. And and you know, I mean, as a customer, you know, you know, if someone is just being forced to to share or to or being sort of paid to promote. Um, and I think that especially at our size, when we are a young brand, uh, it's really important to be able to have that really um, authentic, organic um, endorsement. And I think now I'm going to start saying authentic. The authentic <laughs> aspect, you, <laughs> you bring someone to the site and then once you get them to make a purchase, they're probably likely to become a loyal customer. It, it, it definitely, I think more so again, comparing this to fashion where, you know, depending on the season or your taste level, sort of what's top of mind, um, behavior can, can be a little bit less predictable. Um, yes, I, I think in skincare, if someone has come to, to us and made a purchase um, and had a, a, and seen a benefit um, it is, you know, makes sense that you would see them back again. And of course we are starting to test different ways to get them back. Um, but I, I think that's the behavior that, that's really exciting in this category and, and the wellness category as a whole, if you're making a decision to purchase something because you know that it's going to do good for your body and isn't just a, um, you know, sort of a, a, an impulsive purchase, but it's something that, you know, has a long-term benefit. Um, I, I think that that behavior is, is just much more conducive to repeat. What are some of the strategies that you guys are testing right now to communicate with your existing customers? Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't think we're, you know, creating anything crazy new and, and innovative here. I think what we're really trying to do is, is take the basic channels that are proven in e-commerce and do them well. Um, and, and really be focused with our resources because we are a small team. Um, you know, the tried and true channel that some people, I think, sort of forget uh, or, or just almost overlook is, is email. I mean, email is still an incredibly important channel of, and a, a form of communication with your customer base. And I think um, especially for a product like ours where uh, it's important to be able to tell the story around each product um, to sort of explain the science and the technology, you need a platform that allows for more than, you know, that size of a display ad, right? So um, email is continuing to be a place that we'll continue to invest. Um, like I said, we have, we've really seen partnerships with both individuals and other like-minded brands as a key um, sort of vocal tool. Um, so when it comes to, to influencers, uh, I think at this point, we've probably worked with at least 400 different uh, bloggers or, or YouTubers um, in some shape or form. Um, and that has been just an effort of, again, organically reaching out to them um, and saying, is this something that you'd find interesting and like to share? Um, and then on the partnership side, I mean, you know, I, I used to run partnerships for Bobble Bar. And this was like, I, I love collaborating with other brands. I think it is such a great way um, to put some a product in front of a like-minded audience um, and contextualize your product and sort of say, here's a, here's a brand that we like to play with. Here's a brand that we sort of see as um, part of the lifestyle that we support. Um, and here's the different way that we can collaborate. And that can take so many shapes or forms. Um, but, you know, even a brand like Lola, I think already we've seen just, yeah, just a content swap, just being able to share our story with their audience and vice versa it is a very simple form of, of marketing uh, that is also a very cheap form of marketing. Um, and, and, and that, you know, I've seen that work really well in my prior life. I'm thrilled you brought up partnerships because I do really want to touch on that to take just a quick step back. How do you approach that? Like, what's your thought process of thinking like, Hey, should we partner? Is this the right time? Yeah. I mean, you know, I think partnerships 
it's really hard to like come up with a menu or sort of a set strategy. I think it really depends on the stage of the company um, and what the goals are. And I usually start those conversations. Um, a, I think you're looking for brands or partners, people who share a vision or a mission, right? So if, if we know that a brand um, promotes balanced living, promotes healthy living, or an individual really believes in the type of, um, of products and content that we produce, that's obviously the first filter. Um, and then from there, you know, it usually starts with a conversation that is, what are your goals? Here are our goals. How can we help each other? And I prefer to keep those conversations very open ended, because if you go in with a clear agenda of like, here's what I need to get done this month to hit my, you know, it, it, it sort of a can be a hard way to start start a negotiation and a partnership. But B, I think it limits you to seeing things in a box based on your KPIs and your goals. Whereas if you start a conversation with, what are you guys up to? Here's what we like to do. How can we be creative together? Um, I'm always, I, I think that that always leads to some really exciting formats that you might not have thought of before. And uh, you know, there's a lot of folks in the startup world now who sort of see the world the same way. And you get to come up with really either a cool event or a cool way to do something on Instagram or something interesting on the content side. Um, I, I think that there's just a lot of, I, I love seeing what brands do with each other because I think customers really like to see brands le- play together, right? I mean, that's the way we always used to say it at Bobble Bar. It's like, I love seeing Benefit Cosmetics and Bobble Bar play. That means that two brands that I love get along. Um, and I think it really is a fun way to, um, yeah, extend the brand message without, uh, you know, without creating too much work for both both sides. Can you share whether at Bobble Bar or now at Tula, one of the campaigns that you've run? Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, at Bobble Bar, one of the um, partnership formats that we used a lot was working with um, larger sort of influencers or celebrities on um, almost capsule collections. Um, And so I think that format for Bobble Bar in particular was really um, beneficial because they do have such a broad skew range. So so many different products. Um, They're a fast fashion company. So I think for them, it was a really great way to um, curate and sort of provide some structure uh, to that decision making process and to that fashion. So the last one we did was Olivia Palermo. And, you know, I think she had so many people who wanted to see, well, how would Olivia create a capsule collection of fashion jewelry? Right. And it was a very... Um, clear marketing story and something that people were really excited um, to purchase. Uh, and so that was sort of a very simple form of partnership. And I think with Tula, um, you know, we've really started to experiment with a bunch of different things. It can be something as so simple as an event um, where we share office space actually with Daily Harvest, which is a smoothie company. Um, they're on-demand smoothie company. We literally sit in the same room with them. Um, and we're just like, hey, what are you guys, what are you guys up to next week? We're going to do an event. Do you want to participate? Let's both you know, get our customer bases excited about it. Um, and again, it, it makes sense. Their customer base is a healthy, you know, focused on healthy living, focused on um, getting smoothies that are easy and on demand. Um, and most often or not, that's probably women who are also interested in wellness when it comes to their personal care. So, um, you know, it, it really it totally depends on the format. But in most cases, those simple collaborations tend to be very, um, you know, pay off really well. So I think the main message there, which is so important for young startups, is a partnership doesn't necessarily mean that you're partnering with a huge public company and there's going to be contracts. You could literally do something today. Yes. I I think especially when you're a young startup, it is um, probably best to start with another young startup. Um, One, because they're able to move at the same pace that you are, um, which is usually like, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? (laughs) Right. And um, two, because, you know, you usually have a similar uh, goal set and not to say you can't work with big companies. And I, you know, help structure big partnerships for for, um, Bobble Bar. uh, But I think those do take a lot of time. And as a young startup, you don't really know what's going to work yet. So sometimes it's best to start small do a couple things, you know, see if an event works, see see if a sweepstakes works, see if a content swap works, and then iterate from there. Are there any things on that note, though, for the, you know, fast and smaller experiments that startups are running that they should be weary of or keep on the lookout for? Yeah, I mean, I think that you always have to be cautious of what your what message you're sharing with your existing audience and not to you don't want to tire them out. Right. So, you know, 
off. I mean, it's as simple as having a marketing calendar and looking at what you're doing over the next couple of months and saying, well, you know, I can't, I don't want to hit someone with 12 different messages in, in eight weeks. That, that's a lot for someone to take in. So I think you want to make sure that you're being careful with your resources. One, because it's a lot to manage. I mean, no matter what, if you have a partner involved in something you're doing, it you have to multiply by two everything that has to get done. It, it's always complicated. You know, there's always more timing involved. Um, so I think there's a practical side of just making sure you don't do too much. And then I think from, you know, a messaging side, um, you know, we always say we're, we're a small company still trying to explain what Tula is. We don't want to complicate it too much by constantly talking about other brands. So that's why we're probably pacing ourselves carefully and, and starting with sort of one or two um, simple tests a month before we kind of say, well, we're going to go all in with, with a certain uh, a certain test. Um, so I think that's one thing to be cautious about. And yeah, I mean, I think the only other thing that I always say is that a partnership is is at the end of the day, two people involved in a relationship, right? There's the two brands involved and, and both people are probably managing teams on their own side. But the best partnerships I've ever worked on weren't necessarily the most PR worthy or the ones that got the most attention. It was the ones that there was someone on the other side of the phone or the table or wherever you're negotiating who really saw eye to eye with you and with someone I could trust um, because stuff goes wrong. <laughs> like it's hard. Like it's hard to execute things again when you're managing two teams or three teams. I mean, sometimes you have multiple partners in, a, in an event or whatever it might be. Um, so I, I think you want to make sure that you are excited to work with the person across the table. Um, and that sometimes gets lost. And then halfway through, you're like, God, this is so much more painful than I thought it was going to be. Um, in the early days, you want to really reserve your time and resources. Totally. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you, you don't know if it's going to move the needle or not. And so, you know, you have constant decision in startup life is where do you spend your time? I mean, that, that's the, the biggest challenge. And so you have to be thoughtful about sort of where you're going to do that. And actually, I was lucky. I felt, you know, like immediately coming to Tula, I had folks who I'd worked with in the past at other companies who I was able to call up and say, hey, you know, I'm over at Tula now. Here's what we're doing. Can we work together again? And and that was, was always fun. I love that. And one of the things that you mentioned, I think it's really important to touch on, is that you don't want to partner with too many companies because right now you're still trying to say, we are Tula. This exactly. is what we do. In your yes. experiences, whether here, now, even before, here I meant at Bobble Bar or Tula yes. or even <laughs> before that, yeah. is there like a single insight on brand building that really stands out to you? Yeah, I, I was thinking about that. Um, you know, I, I am not a brand expert with, you know, these amazing like one-liners on here's here's how you build a brand. <laughs> um, I wish I was. Um, I, I really think it's certainly in personal care um, and what we're learning about sort of the Tula audience. I think the most important thing at our stage is being able to articulate why you're different. Because unless you're you're offering a product or a service that is asking someone to change their behavior, you know, Uber, right? I mean, that was that was very clear why they're different because no one's ever done that before. But if you're saying, I'm trying to carve out a portion of this existing behavior and asking you to choose not between whether you're going to wash your face or not, but you're going to wash your face with Tula as opposed to brand X, it, it really has to come down to why is this different and better, right? Not even necessarily better, just different and better for you. And, and I think that, you know, for me, it's been a discipline of coming back to that every time we talk about our an email copy or... Um, a partnership or PR messaging and saying, okay, you know, tool is new. We are in a very crowded category where there's tons of choices. What makes us different? And the two things for us are, are two things. One, we have a founder who is an incredibly trusted authority in the, in the GI space um, and is taking a completely new approach to skincare. And then two, we have, you know, I, I think right now an ingredient story that is very, very different and something that most people's skin has never experienced. You know, a lot of times when she talks, when Dr. Raj talks to, um, you know, does some of her, her on-air television um, hits, you know, she'll say, this is something that your skin has never experienced before. And that's true because unlike a lot of other, you know, skincare brands or beauty brands, we're not using the same um, ingredients that other people have used. Um, and so it's not just what's on the outside of the bottle, it's what's on the inside. Um, so that, that is always what I keep trying to come back to because, um, otherwise you can get, there's a lot of different things that, you know, you have to focus on when you're building brand. 
I'd love to love take like a tiny step up from that when it comes to the brand. From the start at Tula, you guys didn't set out to build a new skincare line. You've really built, and you described it in the beginning like this, a wellness company yep. and brand that encourages you know, users, whether or not they're purchasing the product, to live a healthier yep. and happier life. Why yep. was that important? Yeah, you know, again, I, I think that customers, consumers have become very smart and savvy when it comes to what they want to surround themselves with. And, you know, a lot of people use the word lifestyle now. You know, they talk about the Lululemon lifestyle or the Whole Foods lifestyle. But I don't I don't think that that's just marketing speak. I think that that's very true. You know, we think about the products we use as part of the types of, uh, of the lives we want to live. Um, and, and I think as a young brand, you know, starting out, it's so important to tap into that from the beginning and not just tap into that, but to say that that's crucial to our message as well. Um, and, you know, when I met the team, um, I sat down with, with Dr. Raj and there, it's not like this is just something she talks about. I mean, Dr. Raj lives the most balanced, incredible <laughs> lifestyle I've ever seen. I mean, she is truly what I hope to be when I'm 44. Um, you know, oh my God, I mean, it'd be amazing. And, and I think it comes, it really is based on when I think about who's our true North, our true North is our founder. And she, you know, someone who has two kids, she has a, a, a medical practice, a TV career. She balances that with being now an entrepreneur. Um, she has time with her girlfriend. She, I mean, she really leaves, she works out, she eats well. I mean, these are the things that I think a lot of people, um, do aspire to if you're trying to live a balanced life. And, and so that, when we were thinking about sort of what are the important messages, you know, for the product, for sort of the company as a whole, it, it came back to, well, what is the lifestyle that we're trying to fit into um, and help promote? Um, and I think, you know, she, she often talks about her mission being, whether it's with an individual patient or when she's on CNN or when she's in front of QVC audience, you know, promote, helping women find um, a more balanced life and, and be able to achieve wellness in whatever shape or form that is. And, and I think what I personally like about it as well is that balance, which is what Tula means, Tula literally means balance in Sanskrit, you know, balance is a very, um, is something that can be very personal. And we're not saying you have to live this lifestyle and that's healthy. We're saying you need to find whatever balance works for you to be able to feel like you're, you're sort of achieving w what you're looking for from a health perspective. And, and I think that that's a little bit less intimidating um, than, you know, than some other brands or some other products that are just, you know, it, it's very hard to, to achieve what they're asking you to do. So before we go, with that in mind of yeah. balance and, you know, Tula's broader mission versus like you yep. were saying, just creating a product, what's next? What are you guys excited about right now? So much. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, we have we have a lot going on. Um, obviously, we're really excited about what we're seeing on the skin care side, and we're continuing to um, uh, to build a really strong pipeline there of, of new technology, and that that's exciting. Um, to complement what we're doing on skincare, we are going to be looking at an ingestible product um, because so much of the way that we look at um, you know skin health is from the inside out, and so we literally have some products that will service that, um, especially on, with using probiotics. Um, and then, you know, I think even before that launch, what I'm excited about is continuing to build what we're doing on the content side um, to sort of complement everything we do from a product perspective. And that can be everything from interviews with women who we admire and asking them how they find, find balance in their lives um, to something much more practical, explaining the literal science of probiotics and, and the microbiome and everything that has to do with skin health there. So, um, you know, there's so much that goes into this this product and this space um, that it, to me is just like I could write all day for the next month and we still wouldn't be able to like articulate everything that we've seen and looked at. And so we're really excited to just be able to share some of that. Um, but down the road, you know, there is a number of categories we're looking at that we think Tula um, has a, a great place uh, to play in. Um, so this is just the beginning. <laughs> well, I think that everyone is so excited and you're creating this community that's very hungry for knowledge. Like I'm always yep. eager to see what's next. And like we're saying, it's not even on the product side. It's like, Oh right. wow. Like here's a new tip that I can apply today. Yep. To yep. My exactly. life. So and, yeah. And con content, you know, it, content is hard because you can create content for the heck of cre creating content and you just kind of put it out there and no one ever sees it. And I think for us, we're trying to figure out what content are people looking for based on the questions we get, which is very easy to, to answer. 
And then what is the format of that content that people find most appealing? Is it videos from Dr. Raj? You know, is it um, something on Snapchat that's a very simple tutorial, DIY, right? And so I'm excited to sort of experiment with all these different channels that we have at our fingertips and say, you know, what content fits in with each um, and what is what do people want to consume and when? Um, that that part of, of marketing right now and, and the e-commerce journey, I just think is is so cool and it's changing every day. I mean, God, like, I mean, Snapchat blows my mind. Yeah, me too. Um, I still don't know how to use it. <laughs> I know. And I keep, you know, thank God we have younger girls on our team who I'm like, please show me how to do this. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really exciting time, I think, to be a young company because you, you have a megaphone to speak from, even if you're, you're just still starting out. Oh, I'm so grateful that you came on and shared all this with us and that we're able yeah. to tie in that content part of the end because I'd love to close with the best way for everyone to stay up to date with you guys there on yes. social. And then also if they just want healthy lifestyle tips where they can meet you and then get introduced to Tula. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think um, number one I would direct people to is our Instagram because it's just our most up-to-date channel and kind of gives you a look into the life of, of the Tula lifestyle. Um, so that's at Tula. Um, and then number two, I'd probably say is to come to our website. Um, a lot of information. We're updating it every day about our technology and our products. Um, and within the site, uh, our blog inside out, um, which, uh, again, has a lot of these healthy tips and we're continuing to update with, uh, deep dives into all of our ingredients, um, you know, interviews with really interesting women that are coming up and I think it'll be really exciting. So, um, those are probably where I'd start people and then we can always go from there. But if you have any questions, you can email me or you can email help at Tula and that's a, a great place to start too. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is fun. Thanks so much.